Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the Imperial from late 50s, early 60s. This of course is a Japanese made all metal machine. The Japanese would make a lot of machines in the late 50s and early 60s and they would uh, they were made under all sorts of um, private label brands. So the Imperial was not a sewing machine manufacturer. This particular machine could have been made by Toyota, Brother, uh, Maruzen, uh, Soryu, and there may have been others in Japan making machines. Uh, again, you're looking at a machine that had extra features. Not only could it sew straight stitch, but it could sew zigzag. Now, if you have a new sewing machine, you might say, well, what's the big deal with that? It was an extra cost option back in the day. Now, this machine, when I got it, did not have its table. It did not have a carry case. It had nothing. In fact, it just had the, the head of the machine, which is the chassis and the body. It had, of course, its motor and its light cord, but no power cord. So I have installed a brand new dual block cord. Uh, you saw me install this, I believe, into this case in the last video. And it is um, all ready to go power-wise. It has a uh, replace, I have replaced the um, bobbin winding tire. What else to say? Uh, has a new light bulb. It has what it needs in terms of uh, functioning again. And as I explained in the last video, Singer set a standard that a lot of companies copied. And for our purposes, in vintage sewing machines, that's a wonderful thing. If you ever get a machine and someone says, hey, do you want this? And you think, well, yeah, I guess I could set it up on my dining table and use it, but I don't have a base and I don't have a table. Where am I going to find an imperial table? You don't need to. All you need to do is find a table that is was either a Singer table or it was made to match a Singer table. Um, that is a way to save a lot of these machines and keep using them. Um, let's see what else to say oh I mentioned in the last video that I was I showed you all that I was installing the machine of course this this case bed this base whether you have a base or a table you should have two pins that a sewing machine will in, be installed on and if I tilt this back very carefully underneath whatever you see the pins either in the table or the case you'll see two there's one and there's one over here as I just whacked the camera with my arm now right above this pin you can't see it from this angle but right above is one bolt um, and then you have one on the other side those were loosened um, but then I snugged them down okay you may have to get kind of lean under and get a flashlight to see what you're doing they're not hard to snug you snug them down you do not take the do not take the uh, the pinch pins themselves out of the base or the table because you weaken the the, uh, the holes where the because these are wood screws and you know what happens if you pull wood screws out yeah you can put them back but they're never quite as strong now look at the corners here of the of the actual uh, case and you'll see as I let, let it down gently remember this thing's heavy it fits beautifully that's not an accident that was by design and not mine. It was by the design of the people who made these machines. Now, okay, what do we need to do? We just need to plug in our brand new power cord. This machine is literally being given a new lease on life. It has been gone through. I have performed all of my, uh, you know, my normal uh, overhaul procedures that I do for every machine. And let's see. Oh, by the way, the, the light switch is over here on the on the right. Sometimes they're over here. This one is on the right. You just have to, uh, when, you, when you have a machine, you never know. I'm going to include, by the way, two vintage Class 15 bobbins extra. There's already one in the machine. And I do this so that the new sewer, the new owner, will basically have a good start, have good bobbins to start with. Okay, we have, what do we have? We have straight stitch and we have zigzag, which was a big deal back then. It may not impress people who have modern machines, but this was uh, a big deal back in, back in the day. Uh, Zigzag had only really been brought to domestic sewing machines for 15 years or so, maybe 20. Uh, Zigzag, of course, was created years before for industrial machines. 
actually I think we'll get a better shot. When I have daylight, I prefer that over the electric little light for showing how, how machines stitch. Um, anyway, I've got denim here. I've got two layers of denim and I've uh, also got the denim seam. I, I like this because it's a good way to, to test a machine. And now I just need to get my pedal in front of my foot. There we go. Okay. And get my thread tails here. Notice I can go slow. I can slow that needle down. That's one of the great things that I can go I can go faster. Now, what if I want to What if I want to go in reverse and back tack? A machine of this era has reverse, right? So I'm coming forward, right? I'm going to push in and I've just locked my stitch in. This is a a retractable reverse button. You hold it, it goes in reverse, and then as soon as you release it, it stops. So far, I like the stitch that I'm seeing here. Where am I? I'm going to look and see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got it on the longest stitch length, which I prefer when I'm trying to show what a stitch looks like because it shows up better for the camera. But we'll turn it around. And I will shorten the stitch so you can see, in fact, that it does a variety. And it's obvious when it's making a shorter stitch because you get more stitches per inch and the fabric feeds, it just feeds a little more slowly. Those of you who are sewers know this, obviously. And when you're going over heavy fabrics, make sure that your foot is going over those seams. And again, we'll take a look. Very strong machine. Um, let's come over and then I will demonstrate for you. I'm going to adjust my presser foot tension a bit. And what am I going to do? I'm going to come back over to the longest stitch length. Make myself a new row of stitches here. And what else am I doing now? I am going to, looking for my uh, tension adjustment there. Okay, now it is time to play with zigzag. And of course, you can see an indicator dial here. It's fairly simple. Uh, and what am I going to do? I'm going to push, oh, come over like this. Now, why did I do that? First, I want to bring my needle up. Now. Let me show you again what I just did. You see this green latch. When you this latch determines, like if I bring it here, notice it'll it'll it determines where your zigzag stops. Okay, it, it allows you to control it. So when you're sewing and you've got the zigzag, say at what is that, 2.5 or something, it won't start going over to the other side for you. So it's just a lock. That's really all it is. So if I want to come all the way over. Now I can bring my zigzag all the way over to five, which means I should be getting the widest zigzag that the machine can do. And it should be reasonably wide by the time we get to the 60s. Uh, this machine really wants to sew, and I'm there. I just did some back tacking there under the zigzag. Let's see, we'll make one more row here. And this last row I'm going to make, I will uh, shorten the stitch, not the width, but the stitch length. And of course, when you do that, you get, if not a satin stitch, something fairly close to it. So let's take a look and see what it does now that, I've, now that I'm going to give it that. I can go a lot faster, but when I'm doing something like this, like a satin stitch, um, and I'm dealing with a heavier fabric, I prefer to go at a speed like this. The machine has the power to go faster, but, all right, let's pull it up and see what we have here. Get my thread tails cut off of there. All right. Where did we start? We started this first line down here. You can see that where my thumb is. That's the first 
row of uh, straight stitch. This is the longest stitch. Notice as it goes over this very dense denim uh, seam, it doesn't lose tension. It keeps going. It doesn't, it doesn't get freaked out by that. Now we'll turn over on the other side and you can see the white. You see the individual stitches a little more easily there. And notice here again, it covers that really dense stitch and it doesn't miss a beat. That's the hallmark of a good sewing machine. Uh, now you can see over here where I came here and I shortened the stitch uh, significantly, right? Most people, I don't know, you, you have to tell me when you use, short stitches are not used as often sometimes with knits. And then you can see I lengthened the stitch again. And then I came over and I did a zigzag, uh, a long wide zigzag with the, the white stitch there. You can see it. And of course the zigzag as well does not miss a beat, keeps going. And then you come over here and you can see where I did the very short but wide zigzag and got myself a nice little looking satin stitch here. Let's go back over and you can see the, the, the uh, top, top thread color right there. Um, I really like it when a machine can do things and not complain. Every machine has its limits, but a machine like this was designed to sew everything from light fabrics all the way to the heavier stuff. Now, is, is it unlimited? No. But this one is unusual that I have the original manual to it. And you don't see that very often, particularly with some of these uh, Japanese made machines, because the manual, as I mentioned in an earlier video, it says HSZ-2 model. You don't really see a brand on it. In fact, look at the picture. You don't see the Imperial badge here. Why? That's not an accident. This is the correct manual but they did it on purpose because this machine could have been sold as the Imperial. It could have been sold as a Baycrest or, or a Viking or something, you know, it's all these different uh, private label names. And so often the badges were attached. You can see the screws. They would attach these badges after they got into North America. But anyway, there you have it. The Imperial, uh, really strong, powerful sewer, uh, again, takes 15, class bobbins. These bobbins hold more thread than any other. So you, um, you have uh, at your disposal a very strong sewing machine and it now has a brand new cord and a new base. A base to put it in. Uh, this gives it stability. You can take the base and put it on top of any table and sew with it. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about this machine or you would like to set up a time to test it out and do some test stitching with it and possibly purchase, just let me know. I appreciate you all watching, uh, including when you watch the floor when the camera went was pointing downward. Um, that takes great patience on your part and I appreciate all my viewers for putting up with such silliness. But I wanted to show this to you. This Imperial is, you say, well, what's an Imperial and what's that? These machines were built incredibly well. And if you have looked at the price of vintage sewing machines and you've decided, well, I don't want to pay for a Bernina or, or one of the more collectible singers, but I need a sewing machine that I can rely on, well, something that's strong. Well, you're looking at one and uh, whether it says Imperial or any other private label brand, I always encourage people, if you're looking to get a vintage machine and you don't want to spend a uh, super high price for one, make sure that it can run, okay? And uh, when I put this machine, when I post it for sale, it will be listed as ready to go because it is. Um, and most of what I'm charging for is the labor to give it the full overhaul. If you're going to do the overhauling yourself, then you can get one of these and you shouldn't have to pay a ton, Not you shouldn't have to pay a fortune for it, but you're getting one heck of a value. And nobody makes sewing machines like this or any of the other vintage machines that I showcase anymore. Thankfully, there are tons of them out there and you will see them for sale. This one has been gone through and is ready for a new lifetime of sewing. Thanks for watching everybody.